Welcome, everybody, to this week's The Top Ten Show. As always, I'm one of your hosts here, John Roca, joined by the amazing, talented, and very funny Matt Nost. Hello, how are we? Uh, it's it's nice to see everybody out there. It's nice yes. to see you. You too. Yes. Uh, we're gonna soldier through this. John is not feeling well, so yeah. we are gonna. He's oh. gonna kick ass nonetheless. I am a little under the weather. Thanks you for saying that. But I'm very happy that I got my MacBook Pro back from the shop. It's the third time it's gone into the shop for recall, and I'm getting a little annoyed. Yeah. So if Matt, anyone from works out there from Apple, send me a new one. I'd really love it. It's a 2011. Send me a 2016. I'm just asking for the fans, just in case. Just but, throwing that out. I like that that's just like, a, hey, you know, if anybody's got the time, as opposed to the know, money and wanting to, the time to send it to me and everything else, you just want to go ahead and send me a 2016 MacBook. I listen, mean, they're doing a redesign. You might as well wait for the 2017. It's the first wait, redesign in a couple of years. I'll, I'll, I can suffer through that. No, I don't have three grand lying really? around. Good for you. This is a good man. He's willing to suffer for you out there. <laughs> anyway, today we are counting down the top 10 B-action movies in honor of the release of The Mechanic Resurrection, mm -hmm. which which is the sequel to the, the the remake of The Mechanic, starring yeah. Jason Statham, and I think Jessica Alba this time around. Matt, what's your opinion? Did you see the first one? Uh, I saw the first one, okay. uh, but I I don't remember it Yeah, at all. Like I think I fell asleep the first time halfway through or something. <laughs> wow. Well, it was late at night, so right. I popped it in. I just it was, was going to succumb no matter what, gotcha, I think, gotcha. at that point. It didn't really have anything to do with that, so I picked it up and watched the second half, but it's like yeah. I vaguely, because it was so disjointed, yeah. I don't really remember it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Ben Foster's always good to have in a movie. Yeah. He's a great foil for whoever he, when he plays a villain. Uh, but this one doesn't. This one looks like they're going into the like Jack Reacher, J Jason Bourne type territory. It doesn't feel as as small as the first one did. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I just at this point. His movies, unless he's yeah. part of an ensemble, I'm not really on board with because I haven't seen a good one in a while. Like I like yeah. the first Crank. Oh yeah, Crank was great. Yeah, I, I like that Crank. one. The second one I was like, eh. yeah, you know, just kind of a wasted a very fun premise to me. Yeah. but uh, I hope it's good. Who knows? Yeah. I, I doubt that I'll see it otherwise, though. <laughs> well, we're yeah. not going to waste your time here today. We are going to count down these top 10 B-action films. When Matt proposed this topic, I was super excited because this is something that doesn't come up with us a lot. No. So this is going to be so much fun to see what our tastes are for B-action films. So this is a new thing that we're discovering with each other. So I'm looking forward to it. Matt, you want to tell them how the show works? Yeah, once we set a topic, uh, John and I go our separate ways, and we create personal top 10 lists. We show back up here. I do my bottom three. He does his bottom three. I do my next two. He does his next two. Then we trade one apiece once we're Per, done with our personal top tens, we create the shows between the two of us. Second Damn. point to bring yes. up with you is punting. Okay, seriously. Every week? Punting. I think we could just continue for the foreseeable future. Just Why not? Just move to America. There's at least Damn one it. person a week on Twitter, YouTube is like, I, I'm still lost on the punting. Really? Yeah, at least one. Move to America. All right, move anyway, to America. I'm it's sorry. just that go simple. Ahead. Send him a MacBook <laughs> and then move to America, and the world will be right. That's right. That's all we got to do. <laughs> One thing is just this. It's uh, a term. We're just kicking the discussion further down, so it's like clearing a ball kind of in soccer. You're moving the action. It's going to resume this way because basically all the action is already over here. You're just trying to get it out. So we're saving the discussion for a later date, whoever has that on their, higher on their list, right. so they can express the love more there. Dude, you nailed it. I love it. Perfect. I love it. Let's uh, let's kick it off. You ready? Yes, let's do it. Uh, great list. <laughs> I love that you're already complimenting your own great. list. <laughs> I'm saying from both of us. Oh, yeah, I hope There's so. There's so many guilty pleasures. This is a really guilty are. pleasure movie. Absolutely. Because B-action movies as a whole are pretty terrible. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? I feel like there's going to be some battles. Oh. So let's, let's make it happen. It's just your taste in terrible. That's you know true. what? I love, true. I love his this, and it's just like a his. It's definitely a his a lot. <laughs> I wonder if there'll be any puns. Yeah. Right. There's going to probably. Number 10. Yeah. Uh, and trust me, th this was hard. Uh, was uh, Double Impact. Oh, the, the Van Damme twin one. The Double Van Damme. Dude. Listen. <laughs> I respect that being on your list. I love I love 90s Van Damme. Absolutely. Now we're doubling down on Van Damme. I, it's a terrible movie. Yeah. But if you like jean claude Van Damme, because <laughs> I, I love hearing him talk about it now, just like it was very difficult to play these two different parts. Of course parts. it was. Of course it and, was. you know, I wanted to show people that I had that, range that he could act. stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just like, okay, sure. <laughs> No problem, but I still love it. I love every second of it. It only makes it this low because I could have gone like seven Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, He's yeah. my favorite of the B. I I went to see every single Jean-Claude Van Damme film in the theater up until The Quest was the last one that I went to. Oh, and I was wow. like, okay, that's it. That's you it. Roger Moore and JCBD. Yeah, I hung on for as long Good as I could. Good for you. And then I was like, nope. Because then after that was like that uh, Dennis Rodman one, which was terrible. Oh, yeah. And uh, Double Team, whatever it was called. But this this was actually really fun. And they used, like, I think they were in Hong Kong, right? And they yeah, were they all shot over in the place. Hong Kong. Yeah. And they're just running around. Their uh, parents got killed by, I think it's like the Yakuza or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So they're out. They're to, raised separately. Yeah, they, yeah. They're taken, and one is taken by. Somebody who's like the dad's best friend or that. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Something, something like a, not a, a consigliere, a lieutenant almost. Yeah. 
And uh, he took care of one, and then the other one went off to like a life of crime. He went to orphanages, I think, and yeah. they meet back up to go back and avenge their. It's so stupid. It's fantastic. I love how one's an alcoholic and like keeps having visions of the other one having sex with his girlfriend, and he's mega and all that. It's just brilliant, brilliant stuff. I love that Jean Claude fought to, to have leotards for the one character on his introduction. <laughs> he fought for that. There's no way he didn't. I want to show off this body. Right. You know what I mean? I would have cut that. This and right, he does the split. It's just like what? Why? Okay, <sighs> I love it. What's your number nine? My number nine is uh, it's a terrible movie. Okay, which is uh, Prayer of the Roller Boys. I don't even know. You, my friend, go ahead. I've never, never even seen heard it? of this movie. Corey Haim, right there. What? It's at the height of '90s rollerblading. I no idea. So the villains are like this There's menacing action in this? rollerblading menace. <laughs> no, no. Oh, it's so great. No, stop. Those tons of action. They 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 get guns. They're drug dealers. This there's, can't be real. There's shootouts with <laughs> cops. There's there's action in it. It's just so bad. It's great. So what do I do? I have to dream a little dream. Prayer of the Roller Boys. Nailed it. Uh, it's uh, Yeah, it's so weird. Wow. For, uh, 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 I think it's Patricia Arquette is in this. It's wow. one of the Arquettes. Okay. I, but I believe it's one Patricia. Uh, and she's grading it. Okay. Um, there's a guy that plays like a, the second in charge on the, the evil guys. Yeah. He ends up having a long career. He's been in a million things, oh, like wow. 100 okay. films. Okay. Uh, he's great. Yet. I can't remember his name. I have to look it up. He's one of those that guys. Yeah. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's it's... You know, it's after this big economic crash, and LA is just in a sure. it's a hellhole now. Of course, it is. And they're this white supremacist group that's giving drugs, that's that's neutering, in essence, male popular like the whole population. <laughs> He's trying <laughs> to hook brilliant. minorities. Oh, it's great. Oh my God, this is brilliant. All right, uh, well, please tune in. You if you haven't seen it, more, I mean, I'm, 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 please tune in. I'm good to move on to the next one. If you want to say more, feel free. Uh, okay, it doesn't pique your interest. No, no each interest, uh, no. But I think it's brilliant. It's a great choice. Well, what's your number eight? <laughs> My number eight is another excellent choice. All right. Which is uh, 1984's Runaway. Oh, yeah, the Tom Selleck mm -hmm. one. Cynthia Rhodes, right? And uh, uh, Gene Simmons is the bad guy. Gene Simmons, and he's, he's great. He plays yeah. himself. Yeah. He's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's set in the future of 1997. Yeah. And they, uh, Tom Selleck is a, basically a robot specialist on the police force. Yeah. Because that's a thing that we had, you know, yeah, in 97. Was. From 1984, we're going to have robots, and then these robots start killing people, and yeah. it's this, these little walking bugs. And the first time I ever saw it, I was so mesmerized. Oh, yeah, and it's terrifying. Like I think, isn't that moment where it goes under the door and yeah, it yeah. kills? It's, crawling, it's like a spider, yeah. and it's crawling around, and it's yeah. slowly, uh, it, you know, it, they have to figure out who's doing it. They have these like little like drone ones, too, I yeah. think, at one point. Uh, but it's one of those of, uh, I like Tom Selleck. In these types of movies, like Mr. Baseball, yeah, I love Mr. Baseball. Oh, listen, Tom Selleck, yeah, I'm I'm that way with An Innocent Man. Okay. I love that Tom Selleck film and uh, uh, Quickly Down Under. I'm Quickly Down Under, I know, yeah, I forgot Under. about that one. Yeah, uh, and it's just one of those. If I I can see why Tom Selleck got was supposed to be Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah, you can see like in these terrible movies, yeah, he's still so engaging and such, you know, uh, so transfixing. I guess for me, just like to watch, like I like this guy. Yeah. He seems like fun, uh, and so. I think the first time I saw it was on Showtime or Cinemax in the middle of the yeah. afternoon when I was a kid. Yeah. It just happened to be on, and I was I've I've watched it like every couple of years. I it'll be on again. I'll manage to see it or actually you know search it out. <laughs> it's I for some reason it's, it's just it's a cool little film. I remember watching it too at that it, like when it because I was old enough like when it came out on VHS. I remember getting a VHS watching with people, and you're like, what? The, this I know. is interesting. And now looking back on it, that makes it even more fun. Yeah. It's just like this this is the menacing technology that's going to take <laughs> us down. <laughs> These slow, lumbering little robots. Oh, look out. <laughs> All right. Uh, my number 10 is 1990 Steven Seagal masterpiece, Marked for Death. Uh, no. Okay. Not on. Not on. <laughs> it's, I kept waiting for the punch. It, it was, yeah. Not, go ahead, please. <laughs> this is my favorite. I think this is, yeah, this is the only Steven Seagal. Uh, this is my favorite Steven Seagal movie, period. Like, uh, I know Under Siege is good. I know these are, but there's something about this film. I saw this right after I got out of basic training in the military, and I was down at AIT in Fort Gordon, and I went with some, because you could go on the weekends. You could go to the mall or whatever, because yeah. I had a car. So we went, and w there was just something about that film that got, the J Jamaican guys are so fucking crazy, uh, and, and you get the, like all the stuff he's dealing with that Steven Seagal's doing, like they attack his family and the guy goes, are you ready to die? You know, they have the weird voodoo stuff. So to me, it just was so out there for a film yeah. from that that kind of genre. Because he'd done Above the Law and he'd done uh, uh, Hard to Kill and out of out of nowhere it comes this whole thing with Jamaican drug dealers. Man. I know, it was, it was obscene. Look, it was tough for me. Yeah. I had to basically choose, okay, what Seagal do I want? Yeah, on? of course. 
Uh, and that did make that was tough. That was a tough one mission because of the Jamaican. Yeah, the Jamaicans make it. They man. make it. They make it because it's just like, <laughs> uh, why was this a choice? It's excellent. It's yeah. they're they're really terrifying presence on screen, but it's yeah. so weird. It is. It's a very weird film, and it's a it's actually a really dark film. Like it's it's a harder film than he usually does. Yeah. Like there's more violence in this film because there's like machetes and people getting shot and family members getting killed. His family members getting killed or assaulted, and it's so it's like it's a real emotional dark film, so I, I just love it. It's always stayed with me. Sure. Uh, all right, my number nine is 1979's The Warriors. I think that's a B-movie, uh, so okay. I included it on my list. I've uh, I've never seen it. Wow! Never seen it. Wow! I've heard so many people talking about it, I feel like I know that yeah. like I've seen it, so I've never, anytime I go to watch a movie, I never seek it out. Okay, fair it enough. Just never comes up. Yeah, directed by Walter Hill. I, you know, like you, I came to it much later. You, you haven't seen it, but like I saw it maybe three or four years ago for the first time. Oh, really? And I okay. thought this was fun. Maybe when I get to that age, you I'll go, hey, <laughs> let's watch Warriors. No, but it's a fun, actually, it's a fun little film, and the whole, it's a, it's a real great slice of life of New York in the 70s, and you see these different games. And even the cheesy parts that they're dressed as baseball players or dressed like all that kind of stuff, you kind of buy into it because there's a seriousness that underlies the film that like stays with you. And in fact, they just had like a 30 year anniversary or 40 year anniversary, oh, or whatever yeah. recently, their 35 year anniversary. And they brought some of the cast members back and rode on the subway train that they rode to try to get out of the bad areas that they were in. And James Remar is in this, who was in like uh, 48 Hours and a bunch of other films. Sure, he was Dexter's dad. Yeah, yeah. It's a great. Actor. So to me, it's a fun film. And Deborah Vol Van Valkenburg is in it, who was in uh, uh, Too Close for Comfort. She was one of the daughters in Too Close for Comfort, the Ted Knight sitcom. So to me, it's just a fun, awesome film, and you can get lost in it. And it is a B movie because there's a lot of cheese in it, but it's it's a it's the right kind of cheese. It's a good cheese. That's the, that's what didn't pull me in all these years was seeing like the clips, and I've heard of the yeah. this is the name of this and this and this, and it's just like I don't. It sounds too cartoonish for me. Right, like right. I'm past the age where it grabs you and holds on. Yeah, like the, a lot of the rest of this list does basically <laughs> just like right. listen i can't defend this film because it is terrible but yeah. for some reason it's always spoke to me because i saw it whenever and it yeah. just resonated yeah uh, plus always you have that come out and play uh all right so my number eight is a van damme film from 1990 directed by sheldon Ledich, who wrote blood sport wrote double impact and wrote rambo 3 this guy basically created uh, uh john claude van damme lionheart this is mm -hmm. I absolutely another love. tough omission. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, so it isn't on your list. No, it is oh, not on my list. Man. It's another tough omission. I love this film for so many reasons. Damn, so many reasons. I, I saw Bloodsport the other night, and the reason Bloodsport didn't get on my list is because I saw it the other night, and it's kind of it's kind of bad. We'll and, save that. Yeah, we will even save though that. It's fun. <laughs> Just it's letting you know now, okay. we will save that. That's right. But Lionheart has always stayed with me because of the weird plot where he's like an underground fighter, and the fight scenes are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And he has the flashbacks to being trained. He has his black army friend that he met on the streets who's like managing him, and he's always yelling, Lionheart! You know, that kind of jazz. And you have the like evil blonde rich girl who's setting up the underground fights. And so there's all this kind of cheese that's, the, like I said, it's the right amount of, like smoked gouda, it's just good cheese. And you see him in there doing, and but it's, it's some of the best fight scenes I've ever seen Van Damme do in any film before or any film after. So okay. I just enjoy it for that reason. I mean, yeah, it is the, I, I would say, yeah. You've been doing it for so long. <laughs> yeah, when he goes, well, that's Van Damme. Yeah. That's 100% Van Damme. Well, that's true. Yeah, just the ah, <laughs> ah, slow-mo, let's draw the frame rate out. Yeah. Uh, I love his scream slow motions. I know, just a, <laughs> those are the best. The eyes are like just yeah, he's about to rupture like so many blood vessels, just <laughs> ah, flexing as hard as he can. <laughs> All right, what's your number seven? Uh, my number seven, <laughs> you want to talk about a bad movie that is awesome. All right. It is pure awesome, which is the early 90s classic, Stone Cold, with Brian Bosworth. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, my Saddle God. Saddle up. Wow. Because on a steel horse, this steed rides. Wow. This, uh, this movie, it's so awful. It really I love is. It. My brother wrote to me when I was a kid, and he's like, dude, it's the boss. And I'm like, all right, I'll watch it. <laughs> 
let's do it. And he takes out. It's like uh, William Forsythe is in it. Oh, of course, and, of uh, course he is. Lance Henriksen, of, of course, course he, he is too. <laughs> but they're both excellent. Yeah, that's the thing. I wish, especially like Forsythe, man, that guy is so good. He really is. He's so good. I love him in everything he's ever done. Yeah. And I wish, it, like, it just doesn't seem to to get above a certain every once and again. No, but he consistently works. Like, yeah. that's the thing. He Forsythe consistently works. Always I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I wish I saw him in more prestige films. Yeah, that's fair. Because he could play a lot of like eh, different villains. Yeah. I remember uh, him playing in Blood In, Blood Out. He's playing a Latino gang member. I was like, foresight. But you was, buy it. And I totally bought it. You the buy guy it. He's a good actor. Yeah. So in this, and because they're so good, it covers up the fact that, you know, Boswell's all right. <laughs> you know, for never having acted, you got to give him a little bit of credit. This guy's literally been getting <sighs> concussed his yeah. whole life. Well, yeah, that's what it looks like. The fact that he can remember screen. some lines, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> you got to cut him a little bit of slack. <laughs> And after he got trucked by Bo Jackson, he was out of the league. So his yeah. self-esteem is just fine. We all found that <laughs> That's out. That's true. He hadn't been ruined on his ego. And yeah, so he's a, uh, he works for the government. He infiltrates this biker gang. Yeah. Uh, I think they sell drugs. But uh, in the, they definitely sell drugs. And he's going in to like basically, you know, bring down this ring. Yeah. And the boss, it, it's only the boss can. It, I, well, it's any of these. Like Prayer of the Roller Boys does it too. But at least in that one. The lead antagonist and protagonist yeah. grew up next to each other, so they know each other, so it's easy infiltration. Oh, that's he fair. just kind of shows up right, and slowly weasels his way in pretty quickly. Right. And you're like, wow, that, that was impressive. Good for you, boss. <laughs> but it's so awful. Like In B action movies, there's just a, a ton of schlock. Yeah. It's a lot of schlock. There's yeah. a reason it's B. Right. Um, so this one just always is spoken. That's fair, man. What's your number six? Uh, my number six is uh, the Chuck Norris classic. Ooh. Missing in action to the beginning. Wow. You went to a war film. Not, All right. Not for you? Not for me, because because I, t- I put those in the war film category. So if we ever do a B-action war oh, film. So that's, okay. but, but, but I don't fault you for putting it in there. I it's a good still, choice. It's still an There's action There's still action film. going on. Yeah, absolutely. It goes, it's, my, 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 uh, my desire doesn't mean it doesn't deserve to be on the list. So go ahead, man. Uh, good film. I love that you. Okay, all right. I, just, I love the film. build up to. Uh, no, 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 no. Good though. <laughs> good. You do you. You do you. Yeah. No, 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 no. That was terrible. But it's fine for you. Oh, this is the one where it's fine for the you. water, is it? Oh uh, yeah. It's pure Norris. It's when I was a kid motion. and seeing this, you know, it's him breaking out of the internment or not internment camp, yeah. but the the POW camp that yeah. he's in, uh, in what is it, Vietnam. Yeah. And he's breaking out. So it's that story. It's like they did the first one. I thought the first one was okay. And yeah. then they go back and do this one. And uh, I, I think it's much better than the first one. I get this one confused a lot with First Blood Part 2. Like, which which is the one where the the guy is he is he he's having flashbacks to being in the internment camp. Is that the first one or the second one? Oh, now yeah. See, I've seen this one more often okay. than I've seen the first one. So okay. if they do that in the first cuz the first one was basically the B movie version of Rambo. Yeah, it really was. Uh which is saying something cuz Rambo wasn't done on a huge <laughs> no, budget. It really wasn't. And they managed to come in under budget of that, right, which, is, which right. is impressive in and of itself. So this is called The Beginning? The Beginning. So okay, this so- this goes back to the previous story of where the last one picked up. Oh. Okay. Uh, it goes, you know, predates that, so you get the build up to him breaking out of the camp. So it is when he's in the camp. Yeah. So this you were a- saying the flashbacks and be like, oh, oh that might be in no. the first movie right. in the series. No, 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 no. You're right. This is when he's in the camp. That's right. Because yeah. he has that thing with, like, he has to kill or wh- the general, the the evil Vietnamese general is like killing Listen, his friend. Is wicked. The, the it's script, dark. The script was just a bullseye with these type of movie cliches, yeah. and they just threw darts at it and go, boom, there's our story. <laughs> Uh, it's still good. Put it together, yeah. It's still good. I, I still enjoy it. I agree with you, man. I, uh, you know, I Chuck Norris never grabbed me the way he did a bunch of other people. Sure, sure, sure. So this was my one Chuck Norris. Yeah. Just like, yeah, you know what? I did like a lot of his stuff. I'll, I will choose this one. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right, so my number seven is one of my absolute favorite films. 1985's Remo Williams' The Adventure Begins. Not a lot of people know this film. It is one of my favorite all-time favorite films, uh, directed by uh, Guy Hamilton with Fred Ward, with Joel Grey playing an Asian master teaching okay. Fred Ward how to be an assassin for the, or a hitman for the president. He's a hitman for the president. So he is going to be like someone they train. He would be an assassin then. Well, no, because he's going to be uh, he's going to be hired uh, depending on the situation. But what he does is he finds out that he, he never actually becomes an assassin because he ends up being, they end up finding out that he is, uh, like the, the whole thing is corrupt. 
And so then he becomes like a hitman to try and come back okay. from that situation. And uh, you have, uh, who, who is it? Oh, Victor Wong is in this thing as well. I mean, Wilford Brimley, rather, is in this thing too. He's the corrupt guy, a la like Ned Beatty in The Shooter. He has that kind of corruption going on. Okay. And he tries to like turn uh, Remo well. And this was supposed to be like a series, which is why they call it The Adventure Begins, and all the training stuff that they do. with. And this is a guy you wouldn't normally think, Fred Ward, who had come out of the right stuff. But he has the chiseled face. He does, right? So, you, yeah, you'll buy him as like a Charles Bronson type. Yeah, yeah. That it just, oh, this, yeah that's a good point. Yeah, this shorter, but at the same time, like, there's a, he's a powder keg. Yeah. And he could go off at any point because yeah. the steely eyes sell it. I just remember, like, all the motorcycle stuff and all the battles and the fights in these big fields. Never seen and it. And Joe Gray doing this terrible Japanese or Chinese accent and just totally doing yellow back face. When, yeah, back when Hollywood was openly back racist. When, yeah, we were okay with it, yeah. But I, it's not overtly bad, but it is there. But still, for me, it is one of my closet favorite B-movie films, and I see it whenever it comes on screen. If I'm flipping channels, it's on. I'll go like, oh, shit. So, all right. Uh, then my number six is one directed by John Carpenter, 1986. Big Trouble in Little China. I kept it off because I don't consider it a B-movie. I do. It had a $25 million budget and Kurt Russell starring. How is that a B-movie? It's a B-movie to me, man. <laughs> Just the whole... Because I don't Look, think it's that good of a film, so I think it's a B-movie in my opinion in terms of the way oh, it was done. Oh, now you're attacked. I love the film. <laughs> I love the film. I, I put, It's on my honorable mentions, and I was like, I can't because the budget was too big. Yeah. And it was Kurt Russell when he'd already proved he could be an action star, kind of like... Kind of thing. Well, he'd already done, uh, when this came out, um, what, Escape with Carpenter? Put a pin in that. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't consider this a B-movie because the budget was so high. To me, Kurt Russell almost never achieved A status, necessarily. He's always in these <sighs> under, kind of A-, minus B plus films. I see why you're a red shirt guy. You're a communist. What? I'm <laughs> After all these years, what? we finally figured it out. What? This is, uh, this is, you know, Stalinistic John Come over on, here. Come on, what is that all about? No, no, but... Che Roca. <laughs> On my right. That's right. Let me get the beanie on. Uh, no, not, so it's uh, what Kurt Russell, Kim Cattrall, James Hong, Victor Wong. Uh, great, just a, a funny, stupid little film about. I mean, I'm all the like the you you I consider an A-list film with all the mysticism and no, 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 the, look, the fights and the, the bolt lightning bolts and crap only, like the that. The only thing that they did detract it from cheese. being a beat. It is 100 percent cheese. Okay, then. but because the budget was so high, they didn't do it with more like the practical effects you would assume from a B movie. Ah, uh, so that to me is where. I, Okay. It was what, in my head, I was like, I can't because I know they got to invest in things that an right. old B movie wouldn't have the budget for. Right. What's like, his name, Jack? Uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, uh, um, Adam. Oh, sh you don't remember? I'm sure oh, Cody would dang know it. he's in here. This uh, is that part, like Colin, when he checks in on the CB radio. Is Jack uh, something? Uh, well, we'll have to come back to This your old friend. Ah. We'll have to come back to it. Either way. So we, we got, you know, producers on it looking it up <laughs> because we look like idiots right now just doing, hi, hi, hi. But it's still a fun little film, and to me, it's still B movie because of its its look. I think it's a B movie look, so that's why I put it in the B level. One hundred percent. I love the thing. film. Yeah, I, top and to I bottom. I don't fault you for love. Top it. to bottom. Oh, yeah. If we were doing Kurt Russell films, that honestly, that's my number one more than wow. likely. Wow, wow. I didn't think okay. about it. Jack, Jack Burton. Burton. That's right, Jack. Burton. Your old pal Jack Burton here. <laughs> He's doing like a junior John Wayne. Yeah. It's like John Wayne on three or four, you know? This is coming in just with that. That was yeah. his outfit. That's yeah. what they chose the for. Whole time. It's great. It it's, was, a, it's, a, it's a fun film. It's an a Asian fun truck film. stop, you know, t tank top is what he's got. And they were like, that's what we're going with. <laughs> there it is. That's not appropriation of a culture. Shut up. All right. Uh, what's your number five? My number five. So here's my Seagal choice. Here we go. Which is hard to kill. Yeah. Because Kelly LeBrock, the, the beard and everything when he comes out of the coma and he looks like uh, Mr. Burns when they did the Howard Hughes storyline. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it always reminded me of. But then all the 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 stuff that I've seen years later where people make fun of his fighting style, oh God, yeah. where it's just like this rolling yeah. punch. And he's always in that movie because he's so emaciated with the beard and he's coming back and he's got a cane. That's all it is. Just him waving his hands around a lot. And I just love it. I absolutely love it. Because Seagal just kind of, <laughs> you could see him. He was already phoning in a lot of the oh, acting. Yeah, of and then he was phoning in what the fighting on top it of it. Phoning it in would mean that he would actually have a good level of acting that he could achieve. But yeah, Under Siege. Uh, one film. Uh, he can still achieve it. I suppose so. He can still achieve it. And this is just like, it's, I don't know, if you got to choose from your, you know, Steve yeah. Zagal's This is a good choice, though, man. It's excellent. Yeah, isn't Sharon Stone in this one? Yes. Yes, right? Uh, so, it's like a simple revenge film. Like, yeah. Oh, you, you know, you took me down, I'm taking you down. Yeah. Uh, that's what I loved about Above the Law when he has that line. You fellas think you're above the law. You ain't above mine. 
He's always he's a soft spoken warrior, man. He's a soft spoken warrior. Yeah. And I think this is where they met him and Kelly LeBrock and got married afterwards and were married for a while before they broke up. But yeah, I mean it was it's a cool little film. I think you could be the only person that would look normal without eyebrows. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you took them off, you'd be the one person. Just because his face is just so why, calm why, at why all times. Why are you times. staring at me? Why are you staring <laughs> at me? Yeah, just this uh, is what I do. <laughs> all right, my number five uh is nineteen nineties Tremors. That is my number four. Whoa! Yes. That is my. This is my exception because the budget was middle of the ground. It was but. in the era. It's, it was like ten or eleven million, yeah. and I think the average was twenty. Right, but the the vibe is a B movie. Oh, 100%. which is what's so great about Killer it. Worms. Yeah, Killer Worms. Killer Worms in a town, and you have Kevin Bacon, you have Fred Ward again from Remo yeah. Williams, Michael Gross from Family Ties, and Reba McIntyre, who does a great job in the film. They're both excellent. Is the rednecks who have an arsenal? Yeah, they have their own personal armory, it's and so thank funny. God they've got that elephant gun because that thing. I think might have been the first time I saw uh, saw an elephant gun, <laughs> right. or maybe some African safari Bunny. or something. But this thing—I mean, you're taking down anything with this, other than a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Gun. No, I, but I enjoy the film because it's so much fun, and it's uh, it's got the right amount of horror, like right amount of t tense tension and horror and yeah. whatever. And then you get those moments where some people actually do die, and then some people barely escape. And it's so believable, like when they're coming through the basement or they're coming through that store. Like there's all kinds of stuff that was really and the well done. Grabbers that come yeah, out. The grabbers. And exactly. Just latch on. I mean, basically, it's land jaws is yeah. what it is. Yeah. You can't see the terror, but the terror is underneath you at all times. Yeah. Great premise. Right. Uh, and they pull off the, sp the, the worms yeah. really well. Well, this is why I didn't put Slither on my list, because I'm like, Tremors did it better. So Slither's not on my list, because Tremors did okay. it better. I like That's Slither's, but yeah, I mean, after seeing Tremors, yeah. Tremors still holds up to me. I haven't seen Slither uh, since it came out. Oh, really? I don't think maybe one other time. I was I, on last night. I watched it for 45 minutes, and I was like, nope, Tremors is still much more fun. Okay, yeah. Tremors yeah. to me is, yeah, it's, if we're going to do Worms, yeah. that's my first Worms. That's the Worms to go. I mean, there's Beetlejuice, there's Dune, there's... Oh, yeah, Beetlejuice, uh, right. There's got to be something else. Saiyan Worms are not a new thing. Kinda. No, I'm sure they're not. Uh, then Sarlacc Pit. Sure. Uh, I can't think of any others, although that one's kind of sedentary. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. That's the one that's got type 2 diabetes that's of the Worm <laughs> family. It just sits there just and does sit nothing there. else. Looking for sugar. Uh, what's your number four? In the desert. It's a terrible game plan. <laughs> but that was my number four. So that was your number four. Okay, so then my number four is uh, uh, 2007's uh, Grindhouse. Okay. It's not on my list. Oh, really? Oh, uh, Quentin Tarantino. I absolutely. I went to see this three times in the theaters, all three hours, Death Proof and uh, Planet Terror. I enjoyed the living heck out of this movie. It, it's, I, uh, I guess it's two and a half hours because those because they cut the yeah. films down to about an hour ten each, and then they had all those trailers in the middle, which were brilliant trailers. Uh, but to me, I enjoyed the heck out of this experience and enjoyed. It is such a great homage to the B movies, done as a B movie. You know, you had the you had the like kind of sounds like the record soundtrack going on. On underneath, yeah. you know, all that kind of jazz. And then you have Rose McGowan playing that great character with a bazooka for a leg. Freddie Rodriguez is in there. You have Bruce Willis. You have all these different characters. And then, th listen, Death Proof is one of Kurt Russell's best films ever. He is fantastic in that movie. Like you just said he never hits A status. Well, I didn't. It's a B movie. <laughs> it <laughs> wow. Brings back the fight. I, I Brings the said, fight back around. I never said he didn't achieve A status. I said that he didn't always consistently stay there. So to me, to me, that's the I'm splitting hairs there, but that's, that's fine. Funny. That's but, fine. But that's why people love him because Kurt. People he's like people love Kurt because Kurt isn't necessarily an A guy. He's a regular dude, and I, people love that. I think it's just because he's been around in the public consciousness for so long yeah. that he feels like your buddy almost. Because Absolutely. With our parents' generation, well, I mean, they didn't live in this country, but he was the Disney guy. Yeah, yeah. So right. for their entire that. childhood growing up, and he makes a transition to adult star. So right. he's always been around. So maybe that's what it is, the familiarity. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. you know, be, uh, people treat TV stars different from movie stars. Yeah. You hold them up on a, a higher pedestal yeah. uh, for whatever reason. Uh, yeah. But this is, uh, did you see any of these films? Did you enjoy them? Uh, no? This is, no, I didn't see it because okay. I, I heard mixed reviews from it. And my opinion of Tarantino is so high, I didn't want it to influence it. Right. That's fair. But I love the concept of like a grindhouse where it's something that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Which just plays movies all day long. Yeah. There is no stopping. It just like keeps going. You can leave at any point. Well, and, and I'm a little bit like some of the grindhouse movies from, or most of the grindhouse movies are not things I would go to see. This was a great version of them that sure. was still palatable to a mainstream audience. Sure. And so that's what I enjoyed about it very much. Much. All right, what's your number three? Uh, my number three is uh, the early Van Damme classic. Ooh, another Kickboxer. Van Damme. Kickboxer. Mm -hmm. All right. Not on your list? Not on my list. See, there's a problem. I could have done so many Van Dams. Of course, the whole list could have been Van Dams. It could have been. Like, Someday when, we're going to do a top 10 Van Damme. When, when, I think, when I think the ultimate B action star, it's Van Damme. 
Okay. He manages to turn just as bad projects that anybody else has into yeah. something entertaining that I will watch. Yeah. Which not everybody else can do. So yeah. he's, he just managed to always capture my uh, attention. Or, yeah. And Kid in Fox this, is great. It is. It's a gritty, like, actual... Yeah. They go and they fight. The dude on yeah. the left doesn't look like he's going to be this intimidating. Yeah, with the glass. And does it. And just and he's like Babe Ruth. He calls his shot. Yeah. I'm coming here, and I'm coming here, and you're going down. It just, boom, takes him down. It's just to see Van Damme actually have an equal. Yeah. Someone that they're setting up to that I believe could actually beat him. It's kind of rare. Yeah. I can't believe that. Well, I guess it was early enough in Van Damme's career. Well, Bloodsport, Bolo Young is pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of, but he, but he was not necessarily, he cheated to, through most of that fight. So you didn't feel like he was an equal. And here, this guy is terrifying. Well, plus, plus Bolo, uh, we've seen him be the guy that gets beaten yes. in other movies. And so he's just kind of yeah. used to it. And this Absolutely. guy was new to the scene. I don't know if he did anything after this. Right. Or at least that I saw. No, I didn't. I don't remember him yeah, being in. He maybe answer. stuck to the Southeast Asian cinema yeah. or something like that. It just does. Hey, There's got to be a, a network of people making films down there. There has to be. They, Steve, why, why wouldn't you make for your own Southeast people? Southeast Asian cinema coming up the Oscars for the Southeast Asian cinema. I want to go to their film fest. I've, not me. We'll broadcast not live for there, from I, there. You absolutely will. We had to get tickets for Adam, but Cody is out because he doesn't even pay attention anymore no, on no, this no. show. You know, he's so checked out. It's no, disgusting. no, he's on Tinder. He's on Tinder. So Adam gets a ticket. Adam, come with you know five star accommodations. We'll take care of you. Thanks for going to the wide shot while I blew my nose. I appreciate that. All right. So, what's great is that <laughs> what's great about Bloodsport. I love the parody they did in Hot Shots Part Two when he's <laughs> dipping his hands in the caramel and yeah. the, like the gummy bears and the M and M's. Brilliant. But that tells you how much this film kind of got impacted. into people's yeah impacted people. Yeah, it had it cultural staying power. Absolutely. It's just a simple fight movie. You know yeah. what I mean? A simple action fight movie where it's just two guys ultimately squaring off. Yeah. But it's a bunch of cool fighting. The choreography. He's really good. It is. There's uh, all kinds of brutal training. Yes. That I love in this, like yeah, the, w the watermelons yeah. and all that crap. I believe it, it's got to be in this one. Yeah. Just throwing it down. Just, ah, that's more the Van Damme. Like, ah. Is this the one where they put his legs in the ropes and try to stretch it, like, to get, like, uh, to splits? Do the no, splits? No, that's in Bloodsport. Well, blood he's got to pull it in because he's got his sensei oh, standing okay, yeah, right yeah, below yeah. him. All right. all right. There we go. I think this is the one with the watermelons. <laughs> That's that how, sounds, that's how he great. has so many training exactly. montages, you know. And I'll watch him train again. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll watch him badly dance on a dance floor, do splits for no reason. Listen, he was great in Expendables 2. And if you haven't seen JCVD, you J gotta yeah. see JCVD. You're missing out. Yeah. That's, that's his a best. damn good film. That's his best. Well, he's, yeah. he's, he's introspective. Yes, he is. That that monologue where he has about his family and his yeah. kids. Where he lifts when up he gets into the ceiling. Oh, my and then God. he comes back down and rejoins the story. Whatever jokes you want to make about him from the 90s as an actor, when you see that film, mm -hmm. that guy can act. And yeah. he's learned how to act. Yeah. You know? He's lived a life and you really you exactly. feel it. Exactly. And people love The Rock, but hey, The Rock was a crap actor at the beginning. So let's get something very, very clear right now. You can learn how to be a better actor if you dedicate yourself to it. So it's possible. Yeah, you hear that, Kurt Russell and Rock <laughs> no, and everybody I else? Said Kurt Russell. The outlaw's coming for you. You hear that? Outlaw. Outlaw's <laughs> coming for you. <laughs> Uh, that was your number what, three? That or was my three. Okay, my number three is another John Carpenter classic, 1981. Whoa, uh, Escape from New York. That okay. is such a B movie. Okay. And I absolutely, you're not on your list. No, for a very good reason. Okay. Go ahead. I absolutely love this film. Kurt Russell, Lee Van Cleef, right at the tail end of when Lee Van Cleef stopped doing films. Adrian Barbeau, who is a queen of B movies, uh, Ernest Borgnine, and Donald Pleasance. What an interesting cast. But it's all about, you know, this uh, Snake Pilsen. Is, is Pilskin? Is it Pilsen? Yeah, Pils Pilsen. Pilskin. Pilskin? Okay. He gets Pliskin. Pliskin. That's it. Snake Pliskin. He get he has to like escort. There we go. We got it. Was it escort the president's daughter out of uh, New York and all this kind of jazz. And yep. he has to. So it's such a great film. And they have that boxing match in the ring. All this weird stuff that goes on in the film. Such great imagination from John Carpenter to create oh, yeah. this movie. And what a great character that Kurt Russell created. But once again, it's a B movie. It's not an A movie necessarily, but people revere it and love it to pieces. I think they've admitted to it stole from the idea from, was it, uh, is it Metal Gear, Gear Solid Gear? Oh, at, uh, do they? The video game. Okay. To that's, do that's what that, I've heard. That makes yeah. sense. But I don't know. Maybe it's the inverse. The other, other way was stolen. I have okay. no idea. All right. What do you think? The reason this didn't make yeah, my tell list me about it. Tell is me. because my number two is another John Carpenter classic. They Live. Is it on your list? We got to punt. That's my number two. That's your, we, oh, that's your number two. We can't punt. That's my number one. Uh, it, wow. It only loses because of one we punted from earlier from yours. Okay, okay. Uh, it's great. You don't want to talk about an awesome oh, B movie. Good. That film is so good. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It, it, it was made for $3 million. It really was. It's 19, what, 87? Yeah. Uh, and he was like, let me get the fifth most known wrestler. You know what I mean? 
It's Hulk Hogan, and then now Princess Bride is out at this point. Yeah. So it's Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant. Nobody else. Randy Macho Man. Yeah, but Macho Man is not getting acting. No, he's not. Nobody doing else acting. is getting acting. He's doing Slim Jims. And he, yep. he, he plucks Rowdy. And he was great. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. A friend of the Schmoes, Roddy yeah. Piper, who met him, on a, yeah. talked to him, you know, countless times. Couldn't a, a nicer, you know, guy. Yeah. It's sex. It sucks. He's gone. Yeah. Passed away, you know, not that long ago. Uh, great true. guy. Just really, you know, heartfelt and gentle. One time I was hobbling. I was walking back to my car at the, yeah. the county store and he saw me from across the lot and he's like, hey, Epsom salt when you get home, soak it later. You know, it'll take care of it in a couple hours. And I went home and sure enough. Huh. Was, and it was painful wow. walking around. He's like, that's all you got to do. Don't worry about it. Uh, wow. But it was out of nowhere. Just, yeah. just one random story of a million. Yeah. But he shows up in this, and I always liked him. He's so great. And he's awesome in this. Yeah, he really is. And Keith David is a great uh, partner for him, too. Like, just as badass in a different way. Yeah. Hold his own. The, the fight sequence is... Oh, my Lord. It's the best fist fight in film. Absolutely. Most I, graphic and believable. Believable. That's yeah. the thing. Because a lot of times, it's like when you watch, like, The Raid. Yeah. It's these impossible fights sure. that are amazing, but guys get tired. You know they're choreographed. Yeah. 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 But it's still amazing. Yeah. If you've ever seen a fight, guys get tired. Yeah. You yeah. get tired pretty quick, even yeah. if you're in good shape, because you're yeah. putting all your adrenaline and everything into this fight. And you watch this, and they're tired, yeah. but it looks believable. Yeah. It took like three weeks to choreograph. Look, get Cody. I'll show you. People get tired punching people out. Cody, get over here. That doesn't seem like a fair fight. No. <laughs> You're like two and a half Cody's. What does he weigh? You know, a buck ten? I'll still what get you? tired beating him up. That's just what happens. A buck twenty? A buck twenty. A buck twenty. <laughs> wow. I'm going to buy so you a So stiff breezes are your enemy, is what you're saying. <laughs> a buck twenty. <laughs> And, but great, great. This is a great. And he has one of the best lines ever, right? I'm here to oh, yeah. kick, kick ass, ass and, and chew bubble gum. And I'm all, or, yeah. Yeah. And I'm and all, all, all out of bubble gum. So great. Which is a stupid line. Yes, but delivered, it works. Delivered by anybody else. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that is just terrible writing. And somehow Roddy Piper yeah. pulls it off and you're like, mm, he's out of bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> he is. It's just like you buy the character 100%. Yeah. And it's a, it's a great. Uh, you know, discussion about Reagan era capitalism yeah. and who really owns who in this society. And yeah. it's, it's aliens that are taking over, but they're just saying corporations are taking over. Yeah. And it's still uh, the discussion about capitalism in our current society. Yeah. It, it's such a brilliant message. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing about John Carpenter. This is why I, I put him above George, uh, George uh, Romero in a lot of ways, because George Romero did great, like uh, uh, B movies and Night of Living Dead, all that kind of jazz started a bunch of careers. Great. But John Carpenter at his, at his apex and at his beginning with his first few films, he had a way of walking the line between A and B. They were mm -hmm. B style films, but they appealed to A list audiences. And that's what I liked about his work. It leaves a legacy. People still hear John, Car I mean, Halloween, it's, it's great. Great stuff. I think it just because it's very rare, at least especially in this era, um, where he didn't have a solid idea yeah. coming in. He knew, okay, I mean, I don't know personally, but it seems like because he does the music yeah. and he writes it and he directs it yeah. and he's doing all the producing and everything else, he has a clear vision for it. Absolutely. So sometimes the movies are shorter than others. Sometimes yeah. they're longer, but it's just like, I have a point. I will tell the story yeah. and I will move on. But you can see the amount of attention to t detail and care that he's put into yeah. the characters, the story, the sets the effects, like how are we going to pull off what I need to see Absolutely. kind of thing and what I think the audience should see. Yeah. And he's excellent at it. It's, yeah, yeah, it's the only reason. Yeah. It's just they okay. live is my choice. My number one which is number what one? we punted from earlier, which oh. is Bloodsport. Wow, really? Bloodsport. Oh! So I, I don't but know. But we didn't punt from it. I, it wasn't on my list. Oh, it wasn't on your list. Yeah, this, is your, this is your number one. This Straight is, out. Yeah, yeah, this is my number one. Uh, <laughs> Chung Lee. Chung Lee. Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> it's, it's, he's fist pumping. It's almost in time. He's yeah. like just a half beat behind the crowd cheering every oh, time. Yeah. So it's always a slight delay. And you mean like, Bolo Yung? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just it's it's, so awesome. He's like three three words. He every three scene words. he's in, he's a half beat behind everybody else and what they're doing. So it's, it's a standard through the whole film. He's always just a half a step behind everyone else. You're just like, what? He just said something. Why are you reacting like a second later? It's interesting stuff. But yeah. I, lo I love all the, the stupidity of like, uh, when the guy that was uh, in Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, Ogre. He, yeah, he knocks down Chung Lee. Yeah. And just starts celebrating, like, I won, I won. Yeah, it was like, so weird. You're like, what? You're you're a professional fighter. Yeah. If you got invited to the Kumite, you know what I mean? This very secret, almost ninja-like society. Which is allows... a real thing, by the way. There is a, a Kumite is an actual thing. Yeah. People do uh, have Frank, this fight. This is supposed based on a true yeah, based story on true... <laughs> Frank Dukes. There's a lot of heavy quotations. I don't know how true that is. They got John claude Van Damme, so this wasn't maybe the most believable yeah. stories when he was, you know, hashing out in whatever bar the producer bought it in. Right. I've read, <laughs> I've read interviews with Frank where he says, like, this is kind of true, yeah. but not it's really. It's an interpretation. It was on Earth. 
<laughs> it typically happens in these months. I did yell that much uh, occasionally. Yeah, I do do that. <laughs> uh, I did face a guy that did that. Uh, I, did, I was obsessed with the bandana, taking it off his knee. I did all that. <laughs> holding on to a taunting Van Damme. Jung Lee. That just, was uh, great. And then that one Korean guy, or I guess it was Korean, wasn't it, who trained him? He was in the blue sweater that's always like cheering in the crowd with the glasses. Oh, yeah, I'd assume the so. The random the, dude. With the knockoff members only jacket and <laughs> yes. the thick. Maybe he does cocaine, maybe he doesn't glasses and the pencil mustache. Uh, and, and it's Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker is as one it. of the FBI yeah. agents, government agents that comes in. Yeah. It's, it, it, I've loved it since the first time I saw it. Yeah. I went back, I watched it I can't for this. You, man. Yeah. I watched it for this and it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It doesn't, I, I can understand it. Anybody wants to attack it? Sure. It's got plenty of, you know, there are plenty of chinks in that armor. It's not, it's not difficult to do, but no. for me, it's just like, I, I don't care. It's still a lot say. of fun. It's it a is. mad amount of fun. Tremendous amount of fun. Yeah. And, and the just, fight sequences are great. Like, the punches are great. The punches are the choreography, but yeah. in no way does anyone ever really look like they're getting hit. No, no. <laughs> and I don't care. It just, like, it, it, still, it still holds my attention, yeah. so yeah. I'm fine with it. But, yeah, the, it doesn't look real. All right, so we already said my number one. Yes. Uh, but my number two is 1987, mm. directed by John McTiernan. F-U-J-T-E, Predator. That's my number two. I think I've always said from the beginning that's a B movie. That is not a B I movie. I will never hear a negative word about my opinion on this thing. That is a B movie. I don't care what anyone says. McTiernan directed it, but it has a B vibe to it. Some invisible alien landing on the planet. We have no idea how, how to kill it. He hides out in mud. This is how he does it. How in is it mud. A, how is it a B movie? In so many ways. The dialogue. You have a huge the cheesy budget. action. You have a big budget, and you the, have Schwarzenegger at, at once he's hit status. But no, no, no. It's Schwarzenegger doing vehicles. Commando, Raw Deal. These are all his movies. But it, he's also it he's until he Conan hits before twins. this. It isn't until he hits twins that oh, he... Oh, Baloney, this was a hit for him. Yeah, but it was a B-movie type of hit, like Commando or Raw Deal. These were all the vehicles. It wasn't until he hit with twins that he became a mainstream this, star. This is not a B-movie. It's a B-movie. This is not... If you want to give me Schwarzenegger like Hercules, that's a B-movie. Hercules in New York? I'm yeah. Not, no, that doesn't count. That's not even a good movie. This okay. is a good movie. It's I, a good... It's a top 10, which means good, B-action movies. And this is a good B-action movie. So I don't. I don't understand. What are you talking? Well, first Carl off, Carl Weathers, Jesse Ventura, who became a governor, the Indian who dude, became no, no, a governor. No, that count. That Just count. saying, well, these guys Al had trajectories. Been in Usually, movies. a B movie is like I know him and whoever in the hell all these other dudes. Well, that's are. That's where they were. All those guys. The you running, knew every one of those guys. Running? No, you didn't really. Know. Did you know the Indian dude? Okay, now you're going to like fifth guy. What the fifth guy? He's a big. We, don't, we ain't got time to bleed. I Everybody still, knows this. I still knew Schwarzenegger. I knew Jesse Ventura. Yeah. I knew Carl Weathers. Yeah, but why uh, did you know them? Because you watch wrestling. Because you watch wrestling. Doesn't matter. I still it's knew a, them. That still, make it I still knew them. A-list movie. Listen, I didn't argue putting missing in action. Don't argue me putting the predator on. Why here. is missing in action not? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't argue these points. You, your list is your list. My list is my list. All right, guys, that was our list. You just heard our lists. Let's look at them again just to refresh everybody's memory. Uh, let's take a, take a look at Matt's first. Uh, there it is. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is beautiful. That is awesome. Is that you, Adam? No, that's Cody. Cody, that is, you know what? I take back every negative thing I said earlier. <laughs> I apologize. At number 10, I have Double Impact, then Prayer of the Roller Boys, Runaway, Stone Cold, Missing in Action 2, The Beginning, Hard to Kill, Tremors, Kickboxer, They Live, and finally, number one, Bloodsport. That's a great list. I'm not going to argue that. Let's take a look at my list. It is. You can't argue with a single one being oh, a B movie. Oh, yes. <laughs> look at the guns on me, son. All right. He has an A Movie star <laughs> looks amazing right now. That is such look. That's a B outfit he's wearing. All right, number ten, Mark for Death. Number nine, The Warriors. Number eight, Lionheart. Number seven, Remo Williams. The Adventure Begins. Number six, Big Trouble in Little China. Number five, Tremors. Number four, Grindhouse. The, two, uh, the Quentin Tarantino film. Number three, Escape from New York. Number two, Predator. And number one, They Live. All right, let's go to Cody now on the whiteboard. Uh, yeah. Hey, Matt. Anything you want to say to him? <laughs> <laughs> that was so awkward. That was I, I so know awkward. I really had no idea. It's like you've never been in front of camera before. Come on, we I expect know. you to bring Jesus. more than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here I am. Hey, all Cody. right, all right. Let's, I think uh, our number one is easy. Yeah, they live. They live. Yeah, absolutely. Number so one. go ahead and mark yeah. it on the board. <laughs> let's see that, Cody. Great put penmanship. On the, Great put on penmanship. The Cadillac board. Uh, I'm happy to give you a number two. Exclamation point, by the way. Yeah, yeah that's Sorry, right. That's right. Point. That's a good call, man. Get it straight. I'm happy to give you a blood sport of two. 
Would that mean you then you want your B movie? Predator is going to be on Predator's number three. Your A movie on the list at number three. Well, I'm I'm happy to put Predator at number two if you're okay with. Oh it. no, that's we both don't have that, and I'm not fighting. Yeah. you know, you're not fighting me on Bloodsport. No. Okay, Bloodsport is at two. Let's yeah, go that's fine with that me right now. Predator's on the list. That's all I care about. Predator is on the list. What? So JT you can kiss my ass. Why don't we go Tremors next? Here no, because no, you no no you no. have it at five. No, nope. I have it at four. I don't care. Let's find some commonality because we have so much difference Listen, in common. Predator. Put it at three. It's not a B movie. It's, I don't care. It's I, not a B I, movie. I, I have to give in. I gave in on Bloodsport. It's put on it, your list, it. though. So it's, it's not, not much on my of a list. Give. It's not on my list. Oh, it's not on your list. Right. I keep assuming it is because you yeah. should have more Van Damme on your list. <laughs> <laughs> That's neither here nor there. Predator is number three. Put it on there, Cody. <sighs> Fine. Put it on there. Yeah, That's right. Otherwise, That's he's right. going to throw you. I'm not his, happy about this. He's going right. to throw his MacBook at you. I don't care. That's fine, because someone's sending you one. So you'll yeah, have right. the new one in the mail. So right. chuck away. <laughs> chuck, all right. Number four, Tremors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, Tremors. I'm, I'm fine to put Tremors at four. Uh, yeah, what did you want to put? Tremors at four. What did you want to put? We only have a list of nine movies. You know that, right? What, nine? We're going to have a list of nine movies. That's I'm saying in the end. There's only going to be nine B movies on Shut that list. Shut your mouth. What's your all right, number five? I have uh, Escape from New York. Uh, Next, I got Kickboxer. We already have a Van Dam. Uh, let me put Escape from New York. At Do five. we have any other commonality? No, oh, we don't. I don't think so. No, no, we don't. Not a single one. Tremors I just gave you one. a non-B movie. No, you didn't. You didn't give it to me. Uh, I accepted. Me, it, I accepted it being at three rather than two because I have every right to put it at two. Next. Give me Kickboxer next. I've already given you Predator at three instead of two. All right, the, fine. there's no giving. Fine. Here we put go. Put Kickboxer next. Kickboxer. Kickboxer. But Escape from New York after that at six. So you might as well just keep writing, Cody. Yeah. Keep on going. We'll talk about your penmanship, do, which is do, excellent. Do, do. Oh, is you got R? writing music? Is that an R? Do, 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 do. Sure it is. That looks like a big D. Do, 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 do. Kickbox. <laughs> got a kickbox. That's, I want to see that. <laughs> I just like that your film music is... Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right. What's your, what's your next one? That's the only one? melody you've got in your head. That is awesome. <laughs> what's your next one? Uh, my next one is my first cigar, uh, my only cigar, Hard to Kill. Okay, that's fine. I, I'm fine with Hard to Kill. Hard to seven. Kill. What do you got next? Uh, Grindhouse, the 2007 Grindhouse. Okay. From Quentin Tarantino. So we yes. got three spots I'm going to code it right faster. Grindhouse at number eight. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. No, you don't Two have to, spots left. You don't have to look at him. <laughs> you should always check it. I appreciate that. That is a smart move. Right, you know what I mean? Cooler heads will prevail you in know, this room. Sounds you know what? Don't change it after the show goes off the air. All right. What's your next one? Uh, then I got Missing in Action 2. All right. Is that the one you want to have? What are you going to fight for? Uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Number 10. Although, I would like to put Remo Williams at number 10, since you have such an issue right, with Big give, Trouble. Give Remo. At number 10? Yeah. All right. And then what do you want at number 9? I'd rather have Big Trouble make it than Predators. Really? I'll let you let, well, yeah, no, no, that's no, fine. Gonna, you want to do that. Nope. You want to put Big Trouble at 3? Nope. I got no problem there. Nope. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Nope. Remo Williams. At 10? This is our personal vendetta. Yes, at 10. It was my six, but for some reason, I want Stone Cold on that list. <laughs> oh, you bastard. No way you give me shit for Predator and Stone so, Cold's going to make that list. <laughs> oh, no way. Stone Cold's a piece of crap. All right, put it on there. Fine. Stone Cold and nine, baby. Out. Predator's on the list. The bars at his height. Now, see, in my mind now, we do have nine B action movies on the, the good we B do. action We're movies. We're missing a three spot. If any fan out there wants to give suggestions. <laughs> want to help us with a nine spot. we want spot. a number three, you just let us know. <laughs> Call in. I'm not sure. All right, let's start the this is, list. But... I'll, I'll start since my number, mine is number 10. Rio Williams at number 10. At number 9, Stone Cold. At number 8, 2007's Grindhouse. At 7, Hard to Kill. At number 6, Escape from New York. At 5, Kickboxer. At number 4, Tremors. At 3, what does that say? Predator. <laughs> at number 2, Bloodsport. And finally, at number 1, the John Carpenter classic. Yeah. They, they live. live. That's a good solid list. That is a good solid list. A good solid list of ten B action movies. That's a good solid list. You go right ahead. People will be attacking. I so don't just care. put your defense shield up now. That's fine. That's fine. You know I what? And I appreciate up. that about you. I put my shield up now, like Star Trek. Thanks. You go shield. keyboard cat, <laughs> and you just <laughs> do this, <laughs> and it goes up. Uh, guys, thanks so much for watching and uh, dealing with our antics today. We were having, we had so much fun talking this particular topic. I, mm -hmm. I, it was as fun as I was hoping it was going to be. So it was a blast. I mean, prayer for the world. I've never even heard that film, so there is so much to it's enjoy. It's awful amazing. <laughs> so much it's to enjoy on this list. And if you guys want to watch any of those films, watch them and then tweet at us or text. I mean, not text, but like, uh, you know, uh, uh, what what else? Would, oh, comment on YouTube, comment mm -hmm. on Facebook. Let us know what you thought of the films. If you haven't seen these crappy films before and enjoy them and uh, leave us. And yes, Predator is a B movie. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, all right. Uh, anything you want to say to them, Matt? 
Uh, no, follow me at Matt Nost. I am on Twitter, so I will actually tweet. God hey. help us all. Hey, yes. hey, listen, uh, you, you should have been my wife. I am. <laughs> you should have been my wife. That's all right. I'm glad you're on. Yeah. Uh, what else? If people want to reach out to us or uh, I think uh, if they want to email us, it's Top 10 Podcast, all spelled out, Top 10 Podcast at Gmail or at Facebook.com forward slash the Top 10 Podcast with the number 10. Yeah, absolutely. Follow me at The Roca Says, T-H-E-R-O-C-H-A-S-A-Y-S. Uh, you see all the shows I'm hosting. Please listen to The Cinephiles, my new podcast. It's on iTunes. Uh, and uh, what else do we talk about? Oh, yeah. And follow us at Top 10 Show on Twitter. That'd be great. We're always uh, responding to you guys on Twitter. And yeah, what? Oh, uh, lastly, for those that have asked, you can find us on Android, yeah. uh, you know, uh, phones. So just wherever you get podcasts, just search out the Collider feed, and you should be able to be listed under there. If you can find Collider, you can find us. Yeah. But it's on iTunes, so you can grab the podcast if you would rather listen. Do it there. Definitely. And guys, as always, please subscribe to the channel, to Collider. See all the different and amazing content that's on this channel. Movie talk, TV talk, nightmares, uh, you know, news, all the kind of stuff that we have here, along with the Top Ten show, that we are so proud to be a part of this family. So please subscribe, watch those shows, comment, follow them, and do everything you can to support this channel. And we'll see you guys next week here on the Top 10 Show. TTFN. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.